What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Got a mail call for you and we're going to be looking at some knives that my buddy Dave sent over from sat to dave Let's get into it. All right, so let me set Dave's knives aside real quick. Let's go ahead and see what we have here from Tactical Keychains. I love the name, that's kind of fun. Um, they did reach out to me, but if I'm honest, I don't remember what I agreed to, but I do believe what they wanted to send was very interesting, and the unboxing knife is my Shaman in Rip's Garage Gear Scales. CME from OCD for EDC, I always get asked that and forget to mention that MXGD carry clip. Let's jump in here and see what all they sent me. They sent me a bunch of goodies. I want to make sure that there's no information. Okay, so there you go. If you want 10% off and early access, text TK to that number there. And that's who I was packaged by. Sorry, I was reading. Got a sticker there as well. Um, yes, I do remember. So I'm actually looking for some keychain solutions. And uh, this is the MQR copper. And the reason I wanted the copper is because I have titanium. I thought copper might be interesting to do a little shipwreck patina on. But I do want to do a review on these because I do actually look for uh, options for keychains. Let me see here real quick. I have this still out from the other day. This is the Olight box cutter and uh, want to get in here without making too big of a gash. So I am going to use this to get into the package today. But I had this out from the other day when I unboxed some stuff that I got from Olight. But back to what I was saying, I am looking for keychain alternatives. Um, the magnets that I use just, and this is magnetic, so this might be problematic. I had ordered titanium key rings because of the fact that one of the keys that I have locks my bikes on my bike rack and locks my bike rack to my trailer hitch so that no one can steal it if I need to stop somewhere while I'm hauling the bikes around. Well, anyway, that key keeps going to the magnet and it makes it sit funny um, in my hand, on my hips, whatever you want to call it. I am about to rip this the wrong way. So I was looking for something as an alternative this is in here very quite snugly. There we go. But I do want to do a shipwreck patina on there. Yeah, and it, oh wow, those magnets are very strong. But I wish I had my keys out here to demonstrate that, but I'm sure the description right is probably good enough. But I will do a full review on that. I do like to wear my keys on my hip with a carabiner. And what I'll do is just pull my keys away to start the car and then put them back. So depending on how these sit, I might be able to do something about that, or it could be that what I do is just find some type of covering that I can put at the top of the um, key, because what happens is they're side by side and they keep clipping together and it causes the key to like protrude out funny. But I will do a full review on that. The thing that was also very interesting that I wanted to check out, there's no labeling on here. Oh, it's inside here. Let's get in and take a look and then we'll jump over to Dave's knives. So there you go. Doesn't say what it is though, but it does have that QR code. And I guess if you're on a computer or on a um, tablet, you can use your phone to take a look at that. But I, it's a slide, which I was very interested in because I like this for like a fifth pocket. I have something to compare it to in a future video and for my pouches and organizers. And I really thought this colorway was really cool and it comes with a pocket clip and it has like a seat belt or like a strap cutter. So you can use that here without having to actually move the blade out. And what did I do wrong? Houston, we have a problem. Oh, I just didn't push down far enough, sorry. It's magnetic. So if you're not pushing down all the way, it's not catching the blade. That's pretty cool. And it does take standard blades. So that is something to take into consideration. I think you can just push down and slide it out like that. And then you can pull it out with the magnet. But here it's locked into its full out position. Oh, it didn't push far enough. You got to really push in on that. Okay, got it. 
and then I guess because I was not there we go yeah I got it now I got it now so you slide it back and then you can take it out to the next furthest position there we go so it'll take a minute for me to get used to this but I really like this they are made in the USA and again I think it's really a cool option for um Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see how you do it. So you get it out to the first lock position and then, well, hold on. You get it out to the first, <laughs> the first lock position. Then you can come back with the magnet, push down and get it out to the second lock position. Got it. It'll take me a minute to figure that out. But once I do, it should be relatively easy to operate. Yeah. So USA made, I thought these were cool. I'll do, I'll spend some time with it and get good with working this apparatus here and get all the details off their website so I can get a really good review in on that. I am really excited about the box cutter and I am interested in checking out the option for the keychain. I always like stuff like that because EDC to me is more than just pocket knives, right? It's wallets, pins, flashlights, keys, everything that you might carry on you on a day to day but we're six minutes into this video hopefully with some editing i can shorten that a little bit i wanted to jump into some of these knives that dave has sent over for me to check out and we're going to start with the actual slip joint from medford and that is going to be the gentleman jack so let me set this aside and i can do a couple of size comparisons for you on this one as we talk about it all right so the gentleman jack you can see is a slip joint and he actually had the um ohio river jack in titanium in from somebody else recently to compare these two so i thought i would just do a top-down review and then my qsp hedgehog so if you're familiar with either one of these two you have a rough idea about the size of this one but the medford being a usa made and these two being chinese made obviously for qsp and just a couple quick other references here it is against the praxis for size reference and then here it is against the button lock um elementum 2 button lock sorry almost messed that up so you can see it's a pretty decent sized little slip joint and it looks to be built really well the one thing that i'll say right out the gate i would actually probably loosen that pivot up a little bit i think it would help with the snap it feels very muted and I feel like it's tight in the pivot, but this is not my knife, so I don't want to do that type of adjustment on here. It has a nice flat ground. I think it was S35VN blade. Beautiful grind lines on here. I love the little accented fuller as well, and it feels like it's a hollow grind, so very thin feeling. I like this uh, design aesthetic. Real, real simple. I guess this is a bronze anodized titanium and then it looks like it has like a little spot for a lanyard on the back um, let's see here I can't quite make out what it's saying United States of America I'm not sure I'll have to zoom in for that and I will actually not be able to see it until edits I'm sorry I have my contacts in which are not as strong as my reading glasses um, but it is a nicely built knife and USA made. I feel like if he loosened the pivot up just a smidge, because it does feel locked up solid, I think that would actually help make it feel more snappy on the walk and talk. And the reason I say that is because when I had my, my tactile bear in, it came in just like this. And it was because they had tightened the pivot too much and the walk and talk on it was very muted. But when I released some of the tension on the pivot without creating side to side play, I found like a sweet spot, made it really, really snappy. But this is cool. I didn't even know they made this. So I'm glad he sent this along. I had no idea that Medford did uh, slip joints. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. We'll go ahead and move on to the next knife that he sent. Let me get that out of the patch. And this one he said is the Trouble Blade Work MoFo with the regrind being done by someone that works on Medford. So this is a very unique one-off knife um, when i did the unboxing i said the design aesthetic reminded me of an sng but i knew that it wasn't an sng obviously and i honestly 
from Dave's video thought this was all blacked out. <laughs> I didn't realize it's like a flat dirt, dirt earth color. So it's actually pretty thin and it's surprisingly comfortable. I mean, it's a big knife. It is 100% a bruiser and we'll bring those two reference knives out here again. Here it is against the larger Praxis and the Elementum 2 button lock. You can see it's a bruiser, which is no surprise if you follow Dave or know Dave, you know he likes large knives. He's not messing around with any small or medium-sized knives i don't even think he really messes around too much with like <laughs> a large usa knife in my opinion like the shaman the shaman to me is a large edc this is a bruiser for sure but i really like it i think it's cool and uh, the grind on it is really well done beautiful grind it has some oil on there i'm going to leave that on there just to make sure that it gets back to him safe and sound it looks like it has a really nice edge. I'm not doing any cutting or carrying or anything with something like this when, especially when the guy's telling me that it is like a one-off or rare custom or rare, rare build. Uh, I will say the detent is heavy from trying to flick it. So you really got to get into and put some power into, uh, opening it because if you try to flip it, you can see it's not going to go out if you just try to flip it like something that has a heavier detent you really got to put some ass behind it and this is probably on washers not on bearings so it's going to feel similar to like when you tighten a bug out or a shaman or a pm2 too much it's going to open and close and it's going to feel smooth but it's not going to have that real clip crisp action it's not going to feel snappy like when you give just a hint of play to it and this is locked up solid no play up and down side to side or anything like that the other thing that i really like on here i love the golf ball pattern on here it's in it's enlarged for sure but i also like how the regrind on here shows up a little bit on the closed position that's kind of cool looking you don't see that too often you get a little bit of that reflectivity kind of teasing what's underneath the scale there so pretty cool uh looks like the pocket clip is missing a bolt <laughs> that came like that dave <laughs> i promise you it's not sitting around here at the house somewhere uh at least i don't think it fell out anywhere that i could see and uh looks like it's probably got a captive pivot too as far as the disassembly I'm not sure if these are taking Torx. Yeah, it looks like Torx, but he can correct me down in the comments. And then it's got a spot for a lanyard, and it's probably a little bit of an attitude adjuster too, I guess I could imagine. But really cool. The one that I really thought was the most interesting out of everything he sent, which I thought all of it was interesting, so don't take this the wrong way. But this was really cool. I really admire this one. This one is the SK, I'm sorry, SCK or the Skyke Custom Knives all blacked out really cool design custom knife really outlandish pocket clip that thing is huge and in your face ribbed so it's going to catch a little bit before it comes out in my opinion um not in a bad way but like it's not going to accidentally fall out got a little attitude adjuster back on the back here too i love that backspacer this one here out of all the ones that he sent this time around definitely seem most like him in my opinion this has like total attitude big bruiser uh pocket knife as well really comfortable surprisingly how big it is now you do feel a little bit on the edges here i don't know if it's on the inside or outside i'm thinking it's on the inside that you, yeah you feel a little bit on the inside kind of like hey i'm here versus it being sharp you got a nice landing pad here for the thumb mine kind of almost comes out a little bit and then for choking up you're going to get right up against the fuller you just got to be careful not to go into the sharpening choil there because it's not a ford finger choil uh looks like he's used it some no surprise there i don't think dave saves anything either sort of like myself i love that you can see the grind lines a little bit underneath this type of coating so i don't know i don't think this is pvd and I couldn't find information because when I went to the website, everything's custom, like made to order. So you pick and choose, you know, the finishes, uh, the materials, everything like that. It seems like there's a lot of options there. Really good access to the lock bar, sitting at about 50% on this one. Oh, I didn't do a comparison, so no surprise. One more time, we'll bring out a couple of these budget knives here that kind of cover the large and smaller end of the spectrum. And as you can see, this is large, but I like that the profile is 
clean on it even with the flipper tab i really like that this is not too it has design elements on here but it's not too outlandish it's very comfortable there's not a whole lot hanging out of the back here this one would be probably something that i could see like weekend carrying i definitely could not carry this to the office uh it would be kind of sticking out all over the place because you hit right about here <laughs> with the pocket clip which still leaves a lot of the knife still in the pocket, but that is a lot of knife still hanging out of the pocket on the top end too. So uh, Dave, I'll be curious to see what your thoughts are on this pocket clip when you're carrying this. Do you even notice something like that sticking out of your pocket? That's a lot hanging out of the pocket, bro. Anyway, the detent on this is very heavy or very sticky. I'm not quite sure which one, um, but it is. it takes every bit of strength that I have in my hand to deploy this knife. I don't know, maybe there's uh, some oil or something on the detent ball that's causing it to stick a little bit, but it does feel sticky. And in fact, when I unboxed this the first time, <laughs> and I just missed it there, because there's no jimping on that flipper tab, I gotta remember to kind of push into the knife like a light switch push button combo to get it to deploy, so. But it does have some cool sounds, listen to this. So I just messed up on one of those. I, I kept coming down onto the lock bar trying to push it and that's not gonna work. You have to be, for the thumb anyway, you have to be on that pocket clip. And then for here, it's easier because I can kind of use my finger to sandwich and then kind of catch it on my hand and kind of balance and then I can get it out that way with no issues. But really cool stuff here from Dave. I appreciate you, my brother, sending this in to let me check these out. I would recommend if you're interested, I would recommend uh, loosening that pivot up a little bit. I think you're gonna find the walk and talk improves with just like a small micro turn adjustment on there. But these are some really cool knives that I appreciate you sending to check out. And then of course, these uh, coming from Tactical Keychain, I'll check these out. I just threw them back in the bag real quick so I can take them inside and get them either in an organizer or in a pouch or something to where I can mess with those. But thanks for sending these in, my man. I appreciate you letting me check these out. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Some different type of content coming from my channel. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, and leaving comments. You guys, I appreciate the love and support. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.